My journey really started probably from the age of 14, when I guess at a very young age, school just wasn't for me. I bailed out of school um, at 16. Uh, I always wanted to do something for myself, so I started buying and selling sportswear, buying from a warehouse, rucksack, 125 motorbike, knocking doors on houses, selling in pubs, a bit like a gypsy in that respect, selling sportswear. And then at 18, family circumstances, found myself sleeping in the car, nowhere to live. Um, at 19, you get up off your backside, do something about it. Um, uh, sorry, reversing a bit, at 18 and a half, I got a job on commission only in the insurance industry. Uh, and from there I thought, well, I'm working for half the commission, I could earn it all at 19 starting my own business. I treat business like MMA because I come from a martial arts background and if it wasn't for uh, martial arts, I don't think I'd be doing what I do now because it built my confidence, etc. And in my business modelling and philosophy, I introduce martial arts quite a lot. People don't realise it, but that's what I do. Mindset is extremely important because with the wrong mindset, then you approach things in the wrong manner and ultimately end up doing the wrong things. And I spend a lot of my time, uh, whether it's trying to convince, change, and if they're the right words, um, people's mindset. Because the one thing that really frustrates me is, is a closed mind and a very linear mind. You know, it's to try and encourage people to keep open to the, the possibilities of the world. AI and super intelligence excite me. They don't necessarily worry me. And again, because of most people are a closed mind in their approach, I believe that the human mind has endless possibilities. And if you look at technology around us right now, you look at the smartphones, uh, the advancement of robotics, um, the AI and super intelligence, and, and then you've got the nanobots and everything else, I believe that all of these things are coming in to take away the low-level tasks of the human species, whether that is hoovering the floor or whether it's doing something basic in the workplace, so that our minds can evolve into some more superior form to take on the bigger challenges of the planet will end one day and we need to get off the planet somewhere else. Look, everybody works hard. We sit, you know, it's important to celebrate success because we all work hard and how do we get our rewards? And we all go through phases of, of building our ego. Hey, look at my flash car. Even if you can't afford it, you've got a flash car, a Bentley, a Lamborghini or something. And it's ego because people are looking at it and they're tapping you on the back and everything else. Then you sort of go beyond that. Or well, some people go beyond it. Some people are still in it. Some people go beyond it. And it's just about rewarding yourself for the hard work you put in. You can then justify the watch, the car, because you like cars, not because you want to flash it around everywhere and have the you know, the ego trip, it's just you like cars. I like cars. I probably consider myself, and this isn't ego, I probably consider myself a bit more unique than the average person. And I'm not super successful. I probably consider myself as a success, however you interpret success. Not super successful, but also I'm not on the lower end of the scale either. I learn from everybody, and it's a bit of a cliche, but I learn from everybody. I pick up on words, I pick up on phrases, I pick up on movements, and I learn something from literally everybody. And it, it may sound a bit of a cliche, but it's fact. I've never had a mentor. I've never wanted one. I never felt the need for one. I don't go to seminars. I don't go to events. I don't go to breakfast meetings or networking events. I choose who I network with at a certain level. And if I want to be in touch with somebody, I'll find out where they are and I'll go there. So I just learn organically because self-development is such a critical thing and rather than following somebody, be your own leader and learn your own lessons. Be aware. And that's in a positive way, not in a negative way. Just be aware. Not in case someone's going to stab you in the back. There's a little bit of that as well in, in industry. But generally be aware. Look at the surroundings. Look at the habits of people. Look at the behavior of people. Look at the technology that is, that is coming out. Try and visualize what is due to come out as a consequence of you know, everything coming together and the universe coming together. And just be aware. I've probably got, probably got several, but the, 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 the ones that I really find funny are usually the easiest ones. And I say find funny because I sit back at the end of the day and I go, I can't believe that just happened. 
and it's all gone my way. Yeah. Um, so back many years ago, I guess, and I'm probably talking 17, 18 years ago, I knew some company had approached a, an insurance company in this case for a certain deal. They ended up putting the deal somewhere else, but I knew that insurance company has warmed up to it and really wanted it. So I just basically went, came to London, knocked on the door, and I got the deal in about 20 minutes flat. Now, bear in mind, I was you know, really young back then. And I came back and I thought that was too easy to the point where I actually worried a little bit. It was just too easy. But then I thought, but it was designed to be easy because I picked my moment. It was designed to be easy. But then when it was easy, it worried me. Yeah. But that, that deal went on for five years and, and brought in, you know, multi-millions for me. So that was one deal. This is really an exciting one for me because my son, um, I pulled out of school because he hated it uh, from the age of 12. And he was homeschooled and still is. He's 16 now. He wants to be a mathematical theorist, a Stephen Hawking sort of thing. Uh, it blows my mind, even my mind. And the debates and conversations I have with him are just unbelievable. I don't believe in the school curriculum in the current structure. And that is a load of people. It's just like the workplace, just like anything else. Politics. A load of people focusing on one individual in a room not on each other. So if you look at social learning, and I don't mean social as in being able to interact, I mean, you've got all of these young heads in a room, the pupils, why can't they learn from each other? Instead of focusing on one individual that has a theory and a book that also went to college and university and is fixed in a certain way of teaching, yeah. because they have to, because that's what it dictates. So I believe in the power of the crowd and actually getting everyone yeah. to learn from each other. And that's how I generally live my life, hence I learn from everybody. I haven't got a mentor, a single person, it's from everybody. Yeah, so I would bring kids probably to the age of, I'd say, 10. Age 10, you know, teach them to read, write competently, this sort of thing. From 10 onwards, it's social learning. I would first sack all the politicians. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I would certainly have a layer of people that have ideas. In today's world, I'd have a layer of people who are technology-based as well. I'd probably have one or two politicians there just for, just for a bit of fun. You know, you sort of kick them around a bit. Um, <laughs> uh, that's, that's the sort of thing I would do in terms of my, my government. In terms of changes, I would absolutely fix the NHS. That'd be the first thing I would do. And the reason for that is I don't believe that this government cannot fix the NHS. I believe it serves them a purpose on a balance sheet somewhere. They spent 20 odd billion pound on an IT infrastructure that bloody failed. Now, we know what technology can do. I don't get why the power of your health can't be put in your hands. I don't get it. Why you can't have your dental records, your health records, any other records, which belong to you, by the way, in your hand. And why your surgeons, your consultants, your doctors, any other holistic practitioners can't just put information into one system about you that you have access to. I don't get why that can't be solved. Who said I was happy? <laughs> I generally enjoy business. So I like seeing people thrive and I like helping people. My nature is, is to give and to help people, again, develop themselves in the business world. In life, I spend a lot of my time on health, a lot of research on health, and I always have since, again, age 12. And I just sort of enjoy that environment. Sitting back and playing golf or doing gardening, you know what? I have a job to sit and watch an entire film without getting twitchy. Good question, Musk. Making money can be relatively easy. You're moving capital around. And I think from a Warren Buffett point of view, he enjoys what he does, clearly. Um, would I enjoy what he does? No, not really. I enjoy building businesses. Am I in a business of my passion? No. I'm in a business that I started at 19 that I wanted to do at 19. I'm now 46. Am I in an industry that I, that I love and is my passion? No. Do I have other businesses in industries that are my passions? No. I enjoy health and I enjoy changing the world for the better. Instagram from a business point of view, I don't get the Snapchat business model. I get it from, you know, my daughters use it and whatever, and I've played around with it as I do with new technologies, but I just don't get it. Convert Snapchat into a business tool, 
maybe disappear in emails, um, <laughs> then maybe, maybe we have something. I like flying because it's quicker, but I enjoy driving. Flying scares me still. Nuts and bolts, piece of metal, up 40,000 feet for 11 hours or whatever it is, I just don't get it. You know, I look out the window and I see these like Phillips screws holding the wing together and they're, they're almost sort of flapping in the wind, you know, and it's like, I just don't get it. Trump, I put my money on him <laughs> because, he's, because he's a trader. He, he knows how to do a deal because he's a businessman. He knows how to do a deal and he's a trader and he comes across as real. Never met the guy. We only see what's in the propaganda and the little snippets they pull out for their own agendas. I would love to meet Trump and to have a proper real conversation with him. Yeah, I mean, I was a born vegetarian from, from a very, very young age. I, I, my mother put up some bacon in my hand at the age of two and I screamed the place down and never touched meat again, you know? Then I say never touch meat again. Then I started eating because I fell for the propaganda of you need meat in your diet for protein and training. I was training a lot as well for many years. And from the age of about 34, I started eating, eating some chicken breast every now and then. Then from the age of about 38, I started eating maybe steak once a month. Didn't do the bacon thing and whatever. After that, and I'm talking about three or four years ago, I became vegetarian again. It's a natural state for me. And the, the rationale for it is the toxins in our food. And I could probably make a whole video on, on the subject, you know. Uh, the toxins in the food, the pesticides, and this is an OCD. I'm going to live forever. And I will do anything I can do to live forever. And that is eliminating toxins, cleaning products, whatever. I'll, I'll live forever. First of all, um, in terms of top tips, I don't believe in the word tips. All right, so one thing um, you probably quickly understand about me, I don't run with the words entrepreneur, it's overused. I hate the word tips. I actually dislike cliches. I much prefer authenticity and originality and real. And that comes down to people as well. I can't stand people that are making money from selling theory who've never been there, done it, and are not experiencing it. And there's plenty of those around, all right? And people flock to them and pay 5,000, 20,000, I've seen 30,000, I've seen higher to these people that are actually damaging businesses. Yeah, I mean, anyone can start a business. That's the easy bit. You can start a business. Very few can grow one. And, very, and even less than that can grow one profitably. Okay? So there's a certain... It's, it's not complicated, but there's lots of mistakes people can make. And I used to think of micro-segmentation, which is making sure you stick with the product or products that are making you the most profit and you put your resources, both human and capital resources, into those products to maximize your profit, your gains and your growth. Far too many people start with a passion for a product, realize they're not making money at it, and they go over here and launch another product, another service, then another one, then another service. And before you know it, they've got this range of 10 or 20 different products and services and they're so split, they're not making money on anything. All they've done is make their lives more complicated. Yeah. Businesses tend to, without them realizing it, what they're in search of is a formula, yeah. okay? Then as soon as you realize that you're looking for the formula, yeah. only then you can go and expand the formula. And the formula is what you're really good at, what you can sell most of, where the market opportunity is for that particular service or product, and then growing it, yeah. all right? Everybody in business is looking for the formula, but they don't realize it. Fortunately, I found my formula um, many years ago and I expanded it. But even then, I didn't realize it was my formula. It was just common sense. We're good at this. This makes money. Let's just grow that. Okay. It wasn't until many years later, I thought it's actually the formula I was looking for. And I found by default or, or just common sense. So find the formula. Look, do you, want, do you want to be one of many or one of a few? Yeah, that's the, that's the biggest thing. All right, if you want to be um, one of many, carry on. You're going to be in the 99% of the population. If you want to be one of a few, be the 1% and actually be the 1% of the 1%. And this, and standing out is not difficult because nobody does. All right, to stand out in the workplace is just 
Lyndon, I've got a great idea that I grow the business. You stand out because no, everyone does this. No one, no one puts their hand up. And it's the same for business people. So it's in the vocabulary you use. It's in the way you present yourself, the way you speak to people. All right. And of course, being ethical and moral with it and having that high regard and respect for yourself. So standing out is important. You can have 20 digital marketing consultants, which seems to be every other person these days. You can have 100 social media marketing consultants, which is every person these days. Yeah, most of which with fake accounts. We're going on the fake news bit, which is another subject. But uh, most with bought followers, etc. You're just one of many. How do you stand out? Are you a digital marketeer or do you police digital marketeers? I just think I'm one of those standout kind of guys. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I don't, it's not an effort to stand out. I don't intentionally go, I'm going to stand out today. Yeah. It's just the way I prefer to do business. It's just, just what I do. Yeah. yeah, I like something different. So if your persona is to be something different, you know, is your persona to wear a black and gray suit? You know, do you like Boss or do you like Vivian Westwood? Not everyone can afford Vivian Westwood, but hey, you get bright colors in other shops as well. I don't like feeling greedy. And I think when you build a business and, and you, you, you grow some money and you buy the cars and you buy the big house and you buy the flash villa and you do all this sort of stuff, it's all good and well. You, you, you grow out of it quite fast. And I think giving back, it just, I don't know, it's just important. You know, you want to improve the human species, you've got to give back. Or do you sit there and just be a taker? You know, take, take, take. Yeah, make money, but I'll buy cars for myself when there's so much suffering going on. And there are so many things in the world that need to be solved. And for me, it's about health. In particular now, it's about cancer. You know, and, and I support, and I'm an ambassador for a stem cell research to do with the gut and stem cells. And that's where I spend, you know, my spare time. I tend to spend a fair bit of time on Twitter. So it's at LyndonX. They can find me through lyndonx.com. They can find me through there. If you're not on Twitter, maybe LinkedIn, or maybe just see me around somewhere. I'm not going to die. Um, <laughs> unless you're going to kill me or something, my final words. <laughs> no, not really. Not, not My last words are just, just listen to people and observe. You know, unless you're observing your surroundings, you know, you can be local, you can be your, your area, you can be UK, you can be global, or you can be the universe, or you can be the multiverse. What do you want to be?